Hello and welcome to this video demonstration of Hazmap 3D. This video is a continuation of the compliance review um, on flame detection target fire sizes within Hazmap 3D. What we're going to look at in this video is the different gas detection methodologies which could be applied. Um, now in the previous review we've obviously reviewed our flame detection coverage here in a very simple model of the fire and gas testing facility at Micropax headquarters um, in Port Lethen in Aberdeen. In this review we're going to continue to apply the ISA grading rules um, which we had in the previous review but we're going to have a look at gas detection for this video. Obviously this video is just going to represent a couple of the different methods which you can use in HAZMAP um, but these are probably the most commonly applied methods which, which can be used in the petrochemical industry. Now for the video I'm just going to hide the previous flame detection assessment and the first thing I'm going to do in, in my uh, gas detection assessment is grade the area with respect to what kind of uh, congestion and what kind of application we're, uh, we're dealing with here. So the elevation of this gas grade we're just going to make that four meters and the area is completely open and um, it's open to the environment um, so we'll simply create our grade um, by selecting the areas to encompass and a double click on the last one creates our volume so this is the volume where gas could credibly occur and accumulate a gas release could occur and the gas could accumulate within the area um, so we will just call that grade um, gas volume and we're also just going to exclude the container obviously because that's fully enclosed we don't care about gas within that container only in the external environment. Now that our grade has been applied um, we're just going to hide the grade and start adding our gas detectors. Now we only have one open path gas detector currently installed in the test ground um, so I'm just going to select open path gas detector, select the transmitter and now select the receiver. And we now have our gas detector within the area. Now, the bubble that you can see there is just representative that there is an open path gas detector at that location. This does not contribute towards the assessment in the methodology that we're going to demonstrate here. It's important to note that the hard-edged sphere method of target gas cloud is only one of the potential target gas cloud methodologies which can be followed. But I'll explain that in a little more detail when we look at the specifics of the, uh, the methodology selection. For now, we'll just continue adding some, uh, some gas detectors into the area. Now I'm just going to add a point gas detector into this region here. Obviously, we don't have a mounting bracket, so I can just add the detector onto the ground and then increase its elevation by two meters. Okay, now when the report is generated, the software will obviously recognize that there's no mounting location there for that device, and that information will be generated in the report to explain to the engineer that a mounting bracket or a mounting post will be required for that specific device um, with the specific tag, manufacturer, model, and all of that useful information. Now we're just gonna add in a second open path which currently is not installed on the test ground, but we will use that as a proposed device. Okay. And we're now in a position to carry out our assessment. So I'm just going to hide the detectors so that we can get a good appreciation for the coverage that we'll be affording within the area. And so we'll get into a good position and we'll run the assessment. Okay, so we can see this is a two out of N voted system here, and we'll discuss the methodology just shortly. Uh, but the green essentially represents where we're getting two out of N for the targeted gas cloud, and the orange represents the alarm only coverage, where it'll only intersect with one device. And um, we can see from when we excluded the container, obviously that is not included in the assessment and has been removed from the, the analysis. Now this method of target gas cloud is not to be confused with the simple hard edge sphere, which is often um, used in the industry. Now the main, the main drawback of the hard edge sphere uh, method of calculation is that it entirely misrepresents the coverage of open path gas detectors and this is something to be very wary of. 
If the coverage in an assessment, now some, some methodologies use this, and if it's specified in the methodology, then obviously it, it's generally applied. But one thing to be very wary of is that you cannot simply show this area here as coverage or no coverage and expect that to be an accurate representation of how an open path gas detector actually operates. The open path gas detector may have a little bit of gas which touches that open path, um, but that does not mean that you'll get an, an alarm. The open path gas detectors rely on a given concentration of gas to cross a given distance of that path length. And then that, that is essentially why target um, open path gas detectors um, rely on LEL meters and not percentage LEL uh, as their set, the detector set point. This is very rarely actually represented in gas detection mapping and is absolutely crucial in gaining a proper sense of what the coverage when you're using open path gas detectors will actually look like in any given scenario. So to review what this means from a methodology standpoint, when we go into our grades table here, if we were simply using target gas cloud, we would simply exclude the fact that there's any dilution of that cloud and we would simply make it a one out of n coverage. So if we have a look at this now, and obviously make our, our dilute cloud uh, the same as our dense cloud, change the voting to one out of n. When we run this assessment, you will see what's typically shown as the simple coverage model. So any, any single point that's within 10 meters of the open path or the point gas detector is shown as covered. Um, obviously in reality, that's incorrect. Um, or at best, a, a misrepresentation of how those detectors actually operate in the field. So this is really referring to the beam attenuation model that's within Hazmat 3D, which is absolutely crucial in representing open path gas detectors in the way that they typically are applied. Now this information actually comes from uh, literature reviews over the last 15 years on gas cloud behavior um, in semi-open based um, congested areas. Obviously the main driver behind the performance of the gas detection system is going to be the congestion and the confinement in the given area, as that is the main driver behind how volatile an ignition of that gas cloud can be. This is often referred to as the simple five meter spacing uh, or the target gas cloud methodology. But Micropack take it a little bit further, introduce a little bit more engineering judgment and include the target gas cloud, which includes dense and dilute clouds. Essentially, we are completely aware that the gas cloud will disperse and will accumulate within the area. But using the target gas cloud method, we don't try and predict exactly where that gas will go. Obviously, that method is applicable and Micropack can carry out that analysis. Um, but with the target gas cloud, essentially, we're incorporating well-established principles of gas dispersion based on empirical evidence um, to allow performance-based design using specified target gas clouds. And you can see that in this assessment when we change our voting requirements to one high gas and one low gas uh, and rerun the assessment. As we saw previously, you start to get that incorporation of the fact that you could have a gas cloud of the given diameter, which will intersect with one detector at its low gas alarm set point, but it wouldn't get high enough to actually set a second detector off at its high gas set point. And obviously this changes again when we change the detector set points and the, vo the voting logic. So if we make this no low gas, but too high gas before you get an executive action, this is going to change the assessment once more. Um, and obviously we get a far more conservative view of the coverage in this instance. And it's important to note within the dilute, the dilute and dense cloud mo model, we incorporate in the beam attenuation model, which essentially calculates the concentration of the gas, the given gas cloud across the beam and calculates out whether that will actually provide an alarm or an executive action based on the specific open path and the specific set point of that environment and the facility. The other methodologies with, with respect to gas detection, uh, which are commonly applied, um, is the spacing method um, and also the hard edge sphere method, which we looked at earlier on, where essentially you get either coverage or no coverage using targeted gas clouds. Spacing is even more simple. But spacing can often give quite an optimistic view of coverage. So if we 
introduce a, a spacing method. So we're looking for a 10 meter spacing of gas detectors within this area. We essentially get 100% coverage um, within the zone. Moving on from this, if it was a five meter coverage within the area, um, we can change the target here and introduce a five meter spacing and see what that does to the coverage. So essentially, depending on what methodology is specified in the guidance, Hazmat 3D will be able to comply with that methodology. Um, and it also allows the designer to, to chop and change areas that perhaps aren't suitable for that specific facility. So if it's an as-built facility and any changes to the detection um, would be highly, um, highly expensive and highly intrusive into the operations of the asset, but they want to have a, a, a staged upgrade of the fire and gas, for example, then HazMap can be used to allow a priority listing of the recommendations um, to allow them to see, okay, this is the point that we want to get to based on the updated standards, but obviously we can't do this upgrade all in one go. We're going to have it staged and we're going to prioritise what we input in any given turnaround. If you have any questions on the dispersion capabilities within HazMap 3D, the target gas cloud method, the dense and dilute gas cloud method, or the spacing methodologies, um, please get in touch with anyone at Micropack. The contact details are in the video description and we'll be glad to help you out. Thank you very much for watching.